Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Tin Lam. Uh, I'm working as a consultant for Accenture with uh, AT&T. Uh, my name is Gage Hugo. Uh, I am a developer at AT&T. And my name is Sam Pill, and I also am a developer at AT&T. So this afternoon, we want to present a problem that I know that uh, a lot of operators express uh, you know, interest in is uh, how to actually deal with the, the issue of having plain text password in the various configuration file uh, in OpenStax. So for this talk, we're gonna, we're gonna go over what the problem uh, at, uh, in ATT phase, uh, a proof of concept that we did, kind of, uh, kind of delivering what on, I know yesterday there's a talk in the ASO config, modifying it, and what we tried, uh, how we can solve this, and then we will have a, a live demo, and hopefully that <laughs> will work. Um, so the problem right now is, right, if you wanted to deploy an open staff, Glance, there's these configuration files sitting in SC uh, Glance, Glance config, and in there, there is database connection information, the keystone of the service account with passwords, and those are all in plain text uh, so that the, the ASO config can read and make the connection. The, while we try to protect these things using you know, file permissions so people who have access to the box cannot read these passwords, Oftentimes, when when the uh, when your, your cloud is having issues, and you call the uh, the support and and the folks who actually have access to these uh, to these configuration files will will have sometimes send these configuration files because as a, a developer you're going to troubleshoot this and say okay something's wrong maybe the configuration is messed up uh, can you tell me what the information is and oftentimes they send these files without the thing being redacted. And then it kind of like the whole company knows what the data, uh, your production database password or, or user ID uh, is. And then added to that is in the large cloud deployment, uh, sometimes changing a password across all the node requires uh, the you are relying on the deployment tool, which it takes kind of time to propagate and restart all the, uh, the services. So what this, oh, here's a, right now what uh, an, an example of uh, what we have today, right? So in a normal cloud deployment, you have your keystone providing authentication to the various core services, Neutron over Swift, Cinder and Glance. And then in each one of those services, it, there is always a section called the Keystone uh, Auth Tokens that has a URL, but in there, there's a password sitting there in plain text. Uh, the same goes with uh, the database, right? That you have the MySQL connection in there, and the connection uh, and the password in plain text. Otherwise, the, uh, the ASO config is not uh, capable of uh, connecting. So some of the, the uh, possible solution I think that have been talked in, uh, about in community is perhaps we can just encrypt the entire pass up and configuration file and then we can decrypt it or even partially encrypt a sensitive information like the connection uh, password. The issue with that is when we later on want to update those passwords, we needed to then find the correct encryption and decryption else the way that the, if we have an encrypted password in the configuration file, if we want to update it to a new one, then we have to have the correct password and using the same encryption algorithm and replace it is a hassle uh, from the deployment standpoint. Um, another thing that we, we, we try is to use some kind of a CMDB configuration a management database kind of to store all the credentials in the database but then as a database in general isn't secured, you need to add, you need to do the, the uh, add a security layer on the, on the database. So what we, for this uh, talk, the propose is to use some kind of a secret management or key management store, which OpenStack uh, uh, provides, called it uh, Barbican. 
Thank you, Ten. Um, so for this proof of concept, uh, the whole idea is pull the password out of the configuration file and store it in our, our proof of concept, for instance, Barbican. So it begins in Oslo config. Um, Oslo config loads the configuration files. Um, as you can see on the third bullet point there, uh, instead of having just your plain text password, instead just have some kind of secret, a reference, and then the key name. Immediately the password's gone. All Oslo config will do will be to parse out that string, realize, oh, I need to call out to the um, key management store, and then retrieve that value. Also, uh, another idea we toyed around with was using environment variables. So the project we used for this proof of concept is something called Custodia, which I'll mention more in a second, but this is the general workflow between Oslo config and Custodia. Oslo config will parse the configuration file, read the secret string with a reference and key name. It will also pass those along when it makes its call out, authenticated with a certificate, to Custodia, which is a, as I will explain here, oh, sorry. Custodia is also another type of key management store, but for this proof of concept, we kind of tweaked it a bit. So according to the internet, Custodia is called a PIX, or a container for the host, but just, oh, Custodia really is an open source project created by some Red Hat developers. I think there's only really two that are actively contributing to it. But it is, it is a tool for managing secrets. It basically works the same as Barbican. But what Custodia does offer, and, they're push, and they actively uh, advertise, is you can create your own plugins and use something else beside Custodia, like Barbican, or even Vault if you wanted to. Um, right now, when we tackled this project, when we tackled this problem, uh, Custodia did not support Barbican backend, so that was one of the things we had to overcome. So the main issue was getting it to work with Barbican is Custodia is not an open stack project. It has no idea what Keystone is, so we had to go in, allow Custodia to authenticate with Keystone. We also had the mod, so Custodia kind of works like Barbican, where there's containers and contain but there's not container references, whereas Barbican deals so solely in container references. So that's another small tweak you had to made is make is pass in these container references to Custodia, and Custodia had to recognize that. And then of course we had to create the Barbican uh, store plugin. Then after Custodia was all done, uh, we got Custodia to authenticate with Keystone, and then Custodia would actually call out to Barbican after being authenticated, and then then it will actually retrieve your secret value, which is your password, and it brings it all back. And I will pass off to Sam to talk about these store backends we tried. Okay, so Barbican is the OpenStack uh, secret vault um, using, as Gage was talking about, the container reference and key name. Um, so this is the one that we went with just because uh, it's supported by OpenStack. Um, like we talked about, they are containers, kind of the overloaded term. Uh, we're pushing all of our secrets in there and retrieving them all with Custodia. Uh, and then, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and this is all done through uh, the configuration files. Uh, just want to make it clear that we chose Barbican, but like we talked about, uh, you can choose Vault, Free IPA. Um, it's just that the tweaks that we made work best for Custodia to talk to Barbican. Um, and speaking of Vault, uh, it is very similar to Barbican. Um, it's probably a little further on in development. Um, HashiCorp actually is the ones that developed this. It is also free as far as I know. Um, as you see on the right, it's really easy to just fire up a dev server um, and start throwing in you know, some secrets with key value pairs. Uh, and then if you want to know anything further just specifically about Vault versus Barbican, not necessarily the other secret management software that's out there right now. There is a talk on Thursday at 9.50 titled Comparing the Barbican and Vault Security Models. Uh, just letting you all know about that. And so right now, I'm actually going to jump to a demo to sort of show off the kind of stuff that we tweaked with. Everybody see that OK? Yep. All right. So we're going to quick just source 
so that we can have our admin credentials. Yes. And we're going to jump into the glance configuration file, which is where we put the lines. So as you can see right here, we have our password directly in the configuration file. It's super secure. Just, just like normal. <laughs> and so if we quick just run an open stack image list, may take a little bit, but it'll print out your, your typical list. We just have one uh, Cirrus booted up right now. Um, so let's tweak this a little, and let's just pull out that password so that, you know, we'll comment it out. Um, just pretend like there's no password in there now. Um, we'll make it fail so it doesn't look like we're just pretending. Yeah, this, this is essentially to show that you can't just pull the password out of the configuration files. That doesn't work. And then if we call that image list again, it's going to throw back, I believe, a 403, 503. So sadly, you can't just pull your passwords out of your configuration files and call it good. But our solution, as Gage showed on that uh, slide, is we have now, our password is now equal to the, this string right here is the container reference for Barbican. And then the key name is the glance password, just the glance password that it's going to pull from Barbican and use to authenticate. Yeah, your key name can be anything. Um, it's probably recommended to not just use the glance pass. <laughs> All right, so if we do that, restart glance again, and then run that image list command one more time. Give it a sec. Voila. So this is sort of a really quick run through of our tweaks to, you know, Glance, Oslo, Config, Custodia, and Barbican to sort of be able to pull your passwords out of your text files and not have to worry about, you know, people getting a hold of them through various ways. And we will jump back. Oh, that's the wrong thing. To Q and A. Uh, make sure you go up to the microphones to ask, uh, just so everyone not here and here can hear the question. Uh, sure, Greg. Go ahead. Hey, what is AT&T doing in the interim before this gets, comes to fruition? What kind of safeguards or steps are they taking to make sure that uh, passwords don't get passed around? Thank you. I'll sit down and listen. <laughs> <laughs> I, right now, uh, it's... It's difficult, as it's one of the use cases that the folks who are troubleshooting have tendency to send those configuration. They just kind of copy it and then just send the whole thing through. Um, uh, in terms uh, of that, that's, I mean, other than informing and educating uh, the folks who are doing, dealing with these troubleshooting, to carefully redact the password, right, is really just a file permission. So right now it's an education uh, issue because these passwords are actually needed in the configuration file. We can't take them out uh, at the moment and expect the cloud still work. So that's why this, uh, this proof of concept was done uh, to help uh, solve, to alleviate this problem. And also part of that is also to kind of centralize the password management because uh, I know a lot of uh, folks have the service accounts. Um, I believe the last survey in the open site is like 80 something percent is still using local user, but on people who are having some kind of IDP and LDAP where your password kind of expires uh, and things like that, changing password is a, a very tedious uh, process. So having the ability to uh, centralize and then kind of safeguard on one location these password, it will, uh, I mean, it, there is a benefit and, and gain in that, in that regard. I don't know whether that answered your question, Greg. <laughs> uh, since you're using Barbican as the back end for Custodia, yes. how are you protecting secrets in keystone.conf or in Barbican's configuration file? That is a very good question because part of the proof of concept in here was uh, like, yeah, that, that lead to a chicken and an egg 
yeah. issue. Uh, for, for that, that's why if you, on one of the slides, and I believe that one of the architects had asked that question is that they asked to put in an environment variable. I know environment variable isn't the safest thing, safest thing but in, in the code, the modification to also config is that it is allowed to actually pick stuff up from the, uh, from the environment variable. So you can just do EMV, set that environment mode low key still, and then move on because it's a one time side. Uh, Again, there's a proof of concept. There's probably some stuff that needs to be ironed out, right? Because ideally, the end goal would be to just get rid of password, like moving some kind of certificate base. I know Tsong already support you know, tokenless uh, authentication, but uh, for that kind of outside the scope of the, this proof of concept. Yeah, well, one thing we talked about in Custodia, so I work with the Custodia engineering team. Okay. Um, and one thing that we have talked about is having different backends for different classes of secrets. Yes. And so we, from the get-go, didn't look at using Barbican as a backend, but using like IDM Vault or maybe HashiCorp Vault or something yeah. else and using TLS instead of Keystone. But maybe you can use that as bootstrap and still put everything else in Barbican too. So yeah, something to consider. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, hey, I was wondering uh, if you guys had looked into the Castellon project or you're aware of it and if you were or were not, why you would pick Custodia over Castellon? Thanks. I personally have not heard of Castellon. Yeah, I've heard of it before. Um, um, I think it was more just with Custodia. It looked something similar. It, it looked like something we could work with better. I have, honestly haven't looked too much in the Castellon. Um, okay. I've heard of it before. Yeah. It's something we probably should look into. Yeah. yeah, it just seemed like from the slides that they, I mean, it seemed like you guys kind of re-implemented what Castellon already does. Okay. And I was just curious if there was some distinction I was, I was missing. No, I think, uh, so yeah, we just sort of picked Custodia and then like Barbican's OpenStack supported. So mostly just keeping with the OpenStack theme with like the options of, oh, you can use Vault. Um, but yeah, we haven't heard of Castellon, or I haven't heard of Castellon, so we'll have to look into it after this. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hello. Um, very cool. Thanks for showing this. Um, I was not able to understand uh, very well what is the role of Custodia on this. Uh, cannot you use only Barbican for all of this, integrated with Oslo? If, if that, they answered that question, it is similar to why we are not using Castell. And I, I, I heard of it, never really worked with it. The point was that to provide some form of abstraction in case we later on don't want to use uh, uh, use Barbican, right? Because for this uh, proof of concept, we just decided to choose Barbican. But let's say a, if somewhere when we finally do the architecture, they say we want to use some other vendor, right? Then we just want an API to be able to extract and store secret and not tie specifically to 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 Barbican. So we kind of that. Okay. Custodia and I believe Castle and provide that abstraction layer to to the underlying uh, management system, and that's why we just provide that abstraction there. I mean, otherwise we can just modify also con config call Python Barbican client and then just start using Barbican, but then that tightly couples the uh, the the underlying key management system with whatever it is calling it, right? Okay, I see. All, all these changes that are required in Oslo Conf. And uh, in, in each project, uh, are you guys putting this upstream? Or? Uh, we can put it on GitHub. I believe that there is talk uh, yesterday and also config. Uh, people are interested in writing plug in to, to modify it. To, uh, because uh, I think in the grand uh, secret aside, right, we wanted to be, I, the ask based on that talk was that they wanted to be able to store configuration in a database and to be able to extract the configurations. I mean, there's technical difficulty because you know configuration right now into INI files and 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 they want to like convert it to YAML. But uh, the code will be, is in, in GitHub, but it will need it to work with the, the Oslo uh, at, at least their initiative to kind of drive and move that upstream. But I think that there is interest from folks to to be able to modify Oslo to, to either store config from some external sources, either be Barbican, database, or, or whatever people want to write drivers for. Okay, thank you. 
in the example that you did, you were just using the sender password? Uh, um, glance. Does, glance. Or, I'm sorry. You're glance. fine. <laughs> just the, but it was the service password. Does it work the same for the database passwords? Yes, yes, because what we will do, well, we didn't demonstrate the database password because we are modifying ASA config and the init parser at that level. It will, it will, I mean, obviously the, the, the specification and the technical detail can be modified and changed. So long it detects a certain pattern, then we will go out and actually pull the, extract the secret from the, from the secret store. So if you want to store the secret of max length something, right, password or pattern, that's fine because it's not specific to, to it just in the configuration. We are just kind of hiding away uh, parts of whatever you want to, you know, okay. cap secret. What are you exactly trying to protect against with this? Because, well, you will get the, <coughs> you can always fetch the passwords if you get to the machine anyway. So it's mainly like leaky hard drives if you, the hard drive contents get like published somewhere or is it actually an attacker actively getting uh, entry to the machine or what attacks do you see this protecting against? So I know we were, I, it was on one of the slides, uh, a specific example is when you're passing around the configuration files, say by email or however, um, there's always a chance that that gets intercepted. Um, if someone gets into your machine, there's, and they're gonna get to the configuration file, they can probably get to most of the stuff that we showed off. Um, this is just sort of adding that layer of abstraction that is um, like an extra step that they have to take. Uh, do you guys have any other examples? That you yeah, because what happened yeah. is that as a developer, sometimes if I have access to the machine, I can, let's say, SU and I can read that file, right? And then I say, oh, wait, I think something is wrong with the database. Normally, I wouldn't be able to access the database, but if I can read that SQL line there, I can connect to the database and start. It is kind of just provide the, the extra steps. Okay, well, now I may not, I would not be able to, to, to do it because, like I said, uh, uh, frequent use cases is that when you troubleshoot, people say the environment is down and then you're like, okay, well, can you send me the, the configuration file? Then the, uh, the ops or the, 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 the support team would then just go in and just immediately grab the entire configuration file that you asked for and just send it to you for email. And then on a wide distribution list in, in the company, which who knows who have access to or what people would do with it, knowing that information. So it, it prevents that uh, scenario. So, so how would this solution uh, compare to uh, token or source? So the token, this thing, because Barbican and Vault actually provides also encryption on the password, right? Because we're not really calling keys, uh, calling keystone, because then you have to set up the actually, uh, the, the certificate with, uh, within the configuration. So we, we really just want to provide that, that encryption, because if you're token this off, then you will have to put all those certificates everywhere anyway. So you end up managing certificate versus password. But, Part of that, the reason for that is also we can centralize and manage these passwords and credential in one single location and kind of do both. Other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank Thanks you very much.